but how does one flip a vocal sample like that to even come close to the greatness of burial? Adjust the fades manually so that they are like little blips. Since this is still a club genre, you can always sneak in a little. Future Garage is atmospheric. It's melodic and shuffly and wobbly, all wrapped up in vibes that are unmistakably underground. It's less a mega church spiritual experience and more deep dive introspective existential crisis, which gives a new meaning to saying, why am I crying at the club right now? And that sounds like... <laughs> First, set the BPM to 130. Moody piano melody. Sine wave with erosion and delay for atmosphere. Extra moody respace. And for the first time in my life, playing a progression that's longer than four bars because complex melodies aren't really the focus of this genre and the feeling of atmosphere and progression is. <laughs> Layer that bass with a brassy sounding one. Here's how I made that. Don't forget the sub. Keep that extra thick thanks to the spice rack. Then go outside, touch some grass and film yourself making some field recordings so you can show everyone how deep and introspective you really are. Or if you're permanently online like me, just go outside in a video game and take those sounds instead. So far this sounds like Feels like there's something missing in the middle. So using the techniques I showed you in this video, a textured layer made with my favorite Ableton stock plugin, Granulator. <laughs> Layered with an ARP to help accent the rhythm of the granulator. all together. Now Future Garage was made popular by artists like Burial, but more importantly it's led to the influence and the rise of all the modern bass artists you listen today. The same way the Ramones influenced Blink-182, Burial influenced Skrillex. Meaning, if you listen to any kind of dubstep or melodic dubstep, this was the underground genre that led to all of that. You can hear that inspiration the most in... And with that we need... A deep kick. Editor Ash here. After listening to more Future Garage while editing this video, I realized I was actually missing that distorted kick sound. So I went back into the project, put these plugins on, layered it with a deeper kick, and you'll hear it in the final playthrough, but unfortunately not during the rest of the video. But anyway, back to it. A snappy snare with a plate reverb on it, EQs to leave room for some percussion we'll put in later, and an air band. I'm gonna just copy these settings down, put that into a breakbeat rhythm, which looks like this and sounds like. Now inside this breakbeat rhythm, find pockets of space where you can sneak in hats. And once those are all added in, use Ableton's delay feature to shuffle them. Is how I do it if I didn't just use. 
But since I'm not great at nailing that garage shuffle quite yet, instead of crying about it, I use the tools available to me so I can get my ideas out, because to me, that's the most important part. But there's nothing stopping you from learning it as you go. The goal here, though, is to always keep the drums moving, and there's always some kind of beat happening, even if it's just the hats or the percussion. And since this is still a club genre, you can always sneak in a little But the most important thing is once you have all of these drums in is to set up a side chain so that all of the sounds that we've made in the intro get cut out anytime one of these kicks or snares hits. And altogether, the drums sound like you know what it is. DistroKid time, baby. And you know that DistroKid lets you release on multiple, nay, every single streaming platform known to man in existence. But there lies in the problem. With all of those different streaming services, how on earth are you supposed to tell everybody about every single one of them? Well, DistroKid thought of that too and they came up with Hyperfollow. It's included with your DistroKid subscription, and what is it, you ask? Easy. It's one page that has the links to all the different places your song is uploaded. Meaning, as soon as you upload your song, you can start promoting it with pre-saves on Spotify through the same link. Once it's actually live, it automatically changes to an all-in-one page to find your song. And this is all included when you sign up with DistroKid. It's only $23 a year and you can get an additional discount with my VIP link. 7% off your first year, just down below. As always, DistroKid, thank you for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to it. And altogether, now if we want to evolve the song further, a staple of Future Garage is the incredible sampling of pop songs. But to avoid demonetization, I'm gonna use. We're miles apart, and you're scared that I forget the way. But how does one flip a vocal sample like that to even come close to the greatness of burial? Let me show you. Pitching it up to fit the key. We're miles apart, and you're scared that I forget the way. Octave jumps. which can lead you to call and response arrangement. I have two different vocal hooks and I played them side by side like this. If there's one thing Skrillex took from Future Garage, it's this concept. But that's not all we can do. We can also automate the living heck out of it. Check out all of this totally sane and normal automation. And this includes stuff like adding distortion. You can do this with lots of different plugins. I like pedal if you want a more muffly and deep distortion. Redux is great if you want that bit crushed and glitchy style. And when chopping up the vocals, make sure to keep the chops nice and tight. Adjust the fades manually so that they are like little blips. And when you play them back to back, they sound super cool. You can also do this with plugins like LFO Tool, Duck, Flux Mini if you're lazy and don't want to adjust every fade manually. For a section like this, you want to add some spaciness, so I do reverb throws. To do that, just automate the dry wet of a long decayed reverb on the spots that you want to do it, like this. You can use it to fill space, like this. And of course, good old telephone vocal EQ preset for those little bits of contrast. And as long as you're arranging the vocals into rhythms that are different from the original, the vocals should come out sounding like... And 
And lastly, to anyone who's ready to comment on how I'm pronouncing garage. Did you know that the genre was originated from the LGBT community in a club called Garage in New York, AKA NA, AKA it's canonically pronounced garage. No matter how you say it, just ask yourself, does this really matter as much as I think it does? It's fine. And when this genre eventually gets appropriated by pop artists trying to be trendy, thanks to this video, you'll be more educated and can respect where the genre came from. Now go make some bangers. We're not